Well, hi everyone again. Um, so this video we're going to look at the design of uh, the crystal filter, uh, a ladder filter. Um, I'm going to use an approach that uh, Pete Giuliano N6QW takes. Um, if you look at his blog, he did some design work a while back using the Dishel uh, method for designing a filter and, and had very poor success. So he sort of reverted back, if he is doing his own homebrew filters, back to what he's been doing for, for many years. And it's quite a straightforward approach. So the key is you need to find four crystals, and they all need to be uh, within 50 hertz of each other. And we'll look at a, um, a little oscillator and using SDR Sharp to do that. And once you've got those four crystals, then it's a pretty straightforward circuit. You have, essentially... Uh, let me do one more there. You have the four crystals in series. At each end you have 68 picofarad capacitors. And then in the very middle you have a 150 picofarad. And then at these two junctions here, a 120 picofarad. Another one there, 120 picofarad. That should be about right. So one, two, three, four crystals, three parallel capacitors. 120 picofarads, 150 picofarads, and the next one is 120 with 68 picofarad capacitors um, <clears throat> uh, at the coupling into the, the crystal filter and input and output. And we'll look at later on the impedance. Um, Pete sort of works somewhere between 100 and, and 200 ohms. And uh, like I say, we'll look at that in a sec. So in terms of actually um, finding a, a simple way of, of finding four crystals that are within 50 hertz. Uh, I made up a very uh, simple little oscillator. It's using a, a BC547, a small little MPN uh, transistor. So we've got a, a 1k ohm resistor there. This is running on 3 volts, not very much at all. And coming across here, so in terms of the biasing, we've got 100 K ohm resistor there, and then across that we have our crystal in question, and then across the whole device, 20 picofarads, and then coupling out, doesn't really matter, 100 nanofarads, and we'll sniff that using our SDR Sharp program. And that's that's enough to, to get that crystal oscillating and to get a uh, an output that we can that we can look at. So what we'll do, um, we'll break the video here, we'll look at that particular little oscillator made up in, a, in an Antoids tin, um, an Altoid, sorry, which um, I use as a little SIGGEN, a little low power SIGGEN for testing circuits that we used, that I also used to um, <clears throat> to generate a, a waveform that I could then sniff with SDR Sharp. We'll then look at SDR Sharp, um, and then we'll double back around and we'll look at some of the theory at uh, the input and output um, impedances, looking at the matching transformers, and then uh, we'll look at uh, a way of actually testing the filter to try and get the best uh, passband. So what we're trying to get there is uh, a nice, a nice um, passband with the least amount of ripple. We're not, we're not after waveforms like that. We want to get the least amount of ripple. You know, hopefully something within you know, a dB with some nice symmetrical skirts uh, if we're going to use for both side bands uh, and the like. So like I say, we'll know now, we'll have a look at this um, little oscillator, we'll look at determining the frequencies and then we'll double back and we'll look at um, the impedance matching transformers. Okay, um, so the um, that little single stage oscillator there is essentially here. Um, I use this as, a, uh, as an 80 meter uh, low um, low power sort of signal generator, hence the little Altoid tin just to give it some RF shielding. So at the moment that's got a, a 3.7 megahertz crystal which we'll see come up on uh, SDR Sharp in a sec. Um, I use exactly that same circuit there with the 8 meg crystals to basically characterize that, well when I say characterize, to find their frequency. But um, it's, yeah, it's a very simple circuit. And then uh, in terms of SDR, so we've got the old SDR dongle there. Um, and then I'll just show you the program in a sec that we use. And it's basically just sort of just sniffing the output. Nothing's 
just the antenna for the SDR sharps just sort of you know close -ish to that it's, it's all you need to um, to get a peek on the on the SDR sharp so let's we'll have a look at that now and we'll see how we can read off the frequency okay so we've got um, SDR sharp up and now uh, what we can see here is that frequency popping up so we just were to zoom back out a little bit you can see it just there poking up on the um, above the noise there so what we can do there is if we zoom right up you can then start to move your cursor to get to the highest point and up here we can then read off the frequency you can sort of see there it doesn't take much that's that's 660 and if we come down 50 hertz uh, that's there so it's only fractionally off so you're just looking trying to find those four crystals that are within 50 hertz of each other so I find this is really useful so using these SDR um, so again these USB or these RTL SDR dongles of which you can buy them very cheaply indeed um, and I, I've used this several times now as a good piece of um, of equipment and even with uh, looking for spurs and sort of harmonics and that coming out of your radios it's, it's quite useful for that but certainly here I'm just sort of zooming in and out now um, I find that very useful okay uh, we'll just pause there and uh, we'll continue Right, so before we look at the uh, the calculations for the impedance matching transformers, this is the uh, the test setup. So we've got our um, our crystal filter here. You can see the uh, three parallel capacitors and the two series 68 picofarad capacitors, and we've got a our, our notional transformer which we'll look at in a sec. We have on the input side a 51 ohm resistor in series with this red line here, which is our sig gen output, and on the output we have a 51 ohm resistor. Um, to ground and then across that we have our scope and up on the scope we can see there the output of the filter and I'm throwing in a 2 volt peak to peak signal and at the moment that's at uh, just over 8 megs so if I go down to 8 and we can start to see our in fact, let me just go down a lower you can sort of start to see our pass band there so what we'll do is we'll look at um, the calculations for the, the transformer uh, turns ratio and then that will go into this rig here and then we'll sit and we'll go uh, plus or minus uh, 2k or so on either side um, if not a little bit more of our um, center frequency for the filter and we'll take some measurements and we'll throw that into Excel and then we'll use Excel to uh, plot that and we'll look at the plots and then from there we can actually get a uh, get a nice picture of what uh, the pass band is doing uh, in order to select the best um, turns ratio to give us um, the best output. So if we just sort of come back down to here, so uh, let's zoom up on that. Um, Pete's approach to um, his his very simple way of making the, the crystal filter is to assume that um, from his experience that the the impedance is roughly between 100 and 200 ohms. And what he typically does, he uses 170 ohms. So we uh, assume that our we've got 50 ohms on either side of our filter. So 50 times n squared turns ratio squared equals 170, which gives us an n of 1.84, which happens to turn out to be a turns ratio of 13 to 7. Now I did that, and I threw it into the rig, and I got Excel to plot that out. And what we can do now is just up on the screen, and again I apologise for moving the camera, but this is the easiest way of doing it. And we can see there, that's what I was getting for the pass band. Um, the 3 dB points down from the highest peak is roughly uh, 1.6k, so um, it's, a, it's a little bit on the narrow side, but not by much. Um, but what I don't particularly like is on the uh, the upper end is this this DK here. It's not quite what I want. You know, I prefer to have you know either another slight peak, um, but to be a little bit more the pass band to be a bit more out here before it starts to drop off. So what I did, and again I'll just come back to here. Um, I tried two different things. I tried a turns ratio of. Uh, 12 to 4 sort of working backwards um, I was actually aiming for I was going to guess um, about 500 ohms for this um, and in working that out I uh, 
came out with a nice round number. So 12 to 4 gives us a turns ratio of 3. And then so 50 times 9, which is 3 squared, gives us 450, which is sort of closish to that uh, 500 ohms. Noting that Pete's experience is um, that 170 ohms, is, it, or sort of between 100 and 200 is about what it is. Um, that was better. Um, well, I shouldn't say better. It was okay, but I had quite a marked um, double peak in the pass band, and uh, the, the 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 difference between that point there and the highest point was a dB. So it wasn't too bad, but I thought we could do better. So what I did is I tried a uh, another one. I tried um, again, sort of working backwards. So I was going to sort of find a point halfway between 450 and 170. Um, and I just sort of looked at sort of some nice convenient turns ratios and then looked at what that impedance would be. So 13 to 5 gives us an N of 2.6. So N squared times 50 gives us 338. So that's sort of, you know, halfway between roughly um, the 450 and the, and the uh, 170. Um, and I did plot that and it looks pretty good and we'll look at that in a sec. And just to sort of double check our sort of rules of thumb that we want to have four times... Um, well, the inductive reactance needs to be four times our load. So, uh, on an FT37-43, which uh, both these transforms are wound on, our five turns um, gives us 192 ohms, which is pretty close to four times 50. And then on the other side, our 13 turns gives us at 3.5 megahertz. So for this radio, remember, it's an 80 meter and a... Uh, 20 meter radio, so the lowest frequency is going to give us our lowest inductive reactance. So at three and a half megs, we get 1300, which is pretty close to three times 338. So we're in the ballpark there, so we use those figures. So I wound up um, that transformer 13 to 5. Um, once again, put on the SIG gen and then um, got Excel to plot the output. And as we can see there, and sorry about the, uh, I'm not quite sure if it's aliasing, but it's um, it's something between the, the frame rate of the camera and the refresh rate of the screen, so getting those sort of arcs there. But you get an idea there of, you know, we're a lot better than we were before. So that peak there, uh, the difference between the peak and the trough is um, just under uh, 0.8 dB. So um, I'm quite happy with that. And again, we're sort of that sort of 1600 hertz. Um, pass band at the 3 dB points. So I'm going to run with that and uh, we will throw that into the circuit and um, we will see how that one pans out. So actually that's what's currently in the test rig at the moment and uh, what is also of interest is uh, that the center frequency is roughly um, 1200 um, hertz or 1.2k uh, above 8 megs. So if I, if I go to that's one point, that's uh, 1k above, and that's the second peak, and then we start to drop right off. So the first peak, a bit of a trough there, second peak, drop off. So there we are, there, sort of that, um, that 1200 hertz. So we'll need to keep an eye on that one um, because that's going to be the center frequency of our passband, and then we'll need to step off the appropriate amount to plant our VFO frequency in order to, to get that sideband sitting in the passband of our of our filter. So uh, we will do that once we get to creating the software uh, for the VFO, we'll work out exactly where we need to place that, um, that, um, that VFO frequency, like I say. Okay, so I think that's probably enough now for this video. Um, so we'll break there and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks so much and cheers.